G'day guys, my name's Dave and welcome to another Guitar Zero to Hero song tutorial. In this lesson, I'm gonna teach you how to play Shot in the Dark by John Mayer. Now I'm gonna teach you two different ways of playing this. The first version will be an easy acoustic strum version and then the second method will be the electric guitar version, which is close to the studio recording. I'll also be teaching you the lead guitar parts in this lesson as well. Now, if you want to master your chords back to front, then be sure to head over to guitarzerodihero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Or if you want to improve in your guitar in general, then sign up to Guitar Zero to Hero Premium, which is my complete step-by-step -step guitar course. Let's jump into the lesson. Okay, so let's start with an easy acoustic version of this song. So let's start with the verse, and it's really nice and easy. There's just two sets of chords that we need to learn here. So the first set of chords is just D and then E minor seven. So from the D, keep your ring finger where it is. So pivot around that point, pinky on the third fret of the first string and index the middle finger on the second frets of the fifth and fourth strings. So it's E minor seven and back to D. So that's the first set of chords. And then the second set of chords is E minor seven. Then we go to B minor. So from this point, just pivot around your index finger to bar across that second fret. And then we can play our B minor like that. Then we go to an A chord and then G. So four chords in that second set of chords. So E minor, B minor, A and G. Now for the easiest way of playing this, you can just strum each chord once, but there is particular timing here. So let's learn how to do that. And then I'll show you how to add a strumming pattern to it. Our first set of chords spans across two bars. So we have the D on the one beat, and then we go to the E minor seven on the end beat after the four, and then back to the D on the end beat after the two. So we'll go like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Now for the second set of chords, again, this spans across two bars of music. We're going to start with the E minor seven on the one beat. On the end beat after the two, we go to the B minor. And then the end beat after the four, we go to the A, and then the next end beat after the two to the G. So it'll go like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And we put that all together in the easiest way of playing this verse. One and two and three and four and. If you are playing this song by yourself though on an acoustic guitar, that sounds a little boring. So let's add a strumming pattern to keep a groove going. Let's start with the first set of chords, the D, E minor seven to D. We're gonna be playing a strumming pattern that goes like this. Down, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up. So those three chords are contained within that one long strumming pattern. And the point at which we'll change chords is again on the end beat after the four with an up strum and on the end beat after the two with an up strum. So the first set of chords. For the second set of chords, it's the exact same strumming pattern and the point at which we'll change chords is indicated below. So it'll sound like this. Notice how if we're playing it this way with a strumming pattern, the chord changes always occur on upbeats or up strums. We put that all together and the verse sounds like this. Now you can play your A like this by barring your index finger across the second frets of the fourth, third and second strings, as opposed to doing it like that. If you do it this way, it's a bit easier, but you won't get that first string ringing out. That should be muted. So that's just kind of up to you. Next, we move on to the chorus and things get a lot easier here. So there's two lines of chords for the chorus. So for our first line of chords, we have G and then we have an A and B minor. Now our strumming pattern here changes. It's going to go down, down, up, up, down, up. So we're going to play that once for the G. And the A and B minor will share that strumming pattern and the point at which will change chords is on the end beat after the two or that first up strum. So the first line of chords. That first line of chords is played through three times and then the second line of chords is almost identical except we're replacing the B minor with the D. 
So in total, the chorus just sounds like this. The next thing to learn is the bridge, and it's really simple. We're gonna keep that strumming pattern, the down, down, up, up, down, up. But there's just two lines of chords here. It's four chords, we're gonna have the D for two strumming patterns, the G for two strumming patterns, the B minor for two strumming patterns, and then the A for two strumming patterns. So the bridge. After the bridge, there's a short break and it's just two bars of the G chord. So you can just strum the G chord and hold it out for two bars or you can play that strumming pattern twice. It's up to you. Next, we get to the final chorus, which is the same as the other choruses, except the second line of chords is played through four times and not two times. So that's really nice and easy. And then the outro chords, which just repeats until the fade out of the song, is simply just that last line of the final chorus, repeated again and again. So G, A and D. So those are all the parts you need to learn for the easy acoustic strum version of this song. Okay, so now I'll teach you how to play the studio version, which is all done on the electric guitar. Now, in terms of tone, I've recorded everything using the Boss Katana 100 Mark II, but essentially I've got a clean amp channel here. I've got a tiny bit of blues drive, a chorus pedal, a delay, and a reverb. And I'm using the middle pickup here. Let's start with the intro, and it's really nice and easy. This is one line of tab here. We're gonna be using a bunch of triad shapes here, which is really cool. These are really great to know in general. And if you learned how to play Last Train Home, then a lot of these shapes will be very familiar to you. First off, we have a D inversion. So that's just our index finger barred across the seventh frets of the four, third, and second strings. We're gonna be using our fingers here. So I use the thumb and the index and middle finger to like these three strings. And then on the end beat after the four, we're playing a E minor seven inversion. So it's the same as an E minor bar chord like this, but we're only really playing the four, third and second strings. So from this position, put your ring finger and middle finger on the ninth and eighth frets respectively. So that'll be on the end beat after the four and we'll go back to the D on the end beat after the two. For the next bar, we'll go back to E minor seven shape and then we'll play a B minor triad. So from this E minor seven, we're just lifting our middle finger. And then we're gonna go down to an A shape. So that's just a typical major triad like this on the seventh, sixth and fifth frets of the fourth, third and second strings. So that's an A major triad. And then we go down to a G triad. The specific timing of when to hit those notes is shown in the tab below and it'll sound like this. So next we get to the verse, and the verse is basically identical to the intro, except we only hit the fourth and third strings here. So you can play the exact same shapes if you want, and the timing's identical, but we don't hit the second string here at all. It's only the fourth and third strings. So it will sound like this. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and Next we get to the chorus, let's focus on our first two bars here. Our first chord shape is a G6. So to play this, it's a bit of a stretchy chord, but as long as you keep your thumb down here, then you should be able to reach all those frets. But basically, middle finger on the third fret of the sixth string, pinky finger on the D note here, the fifth fret of the fifth string, then your index finger will bar across the second frets of the fifth, fourth, and third strings and your ring finger here will play the fourth fret of the third string. Now, when we play this, I'm taking my index, middle, and ring finger up to the fifth, fourth, and third strings like this, and the thumb on the sixth string. Now, I'm gonna pinch the sixth and third strings together, and then on the end beat after the two, I'll lift my ring finger. So now this shape is a G6 sus two. So one and two and three and four. 
four and and then we're gonna take that G6 shape up two frets. So now it's an A6 shape. We're gonna start by hitting the bass note and then pluck the fifth, fourth, and third strings on the end beat after one. And then we go up to the B minus seven. So just keep your pinky finger where it is, slide that up to the ninth fret and bar your index finger across the seventh frets. I'm gonna pinch the low four strings here. And that's on the end bit after the two. So these two bars in total. We play those two bars through three times. And then for our next section, we're playing our G6 sus2. We're playing that, holding it out for a full bar. And then we just go to an A chord. We're gonna pinch the fifth, fourth, third, and second strings here. And then we go to a D and we can just pinch the four third and second strings here. So these two bars, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And in total for the chorus. So that's it for the chorus. Next we get to the break. Now the break is almost similar to the intro, except in the third bar, we're gonna mix things up a little bit. So we start off the same way. So one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and. But then we go down to the ninth frets of the fifth and fourth string with our ring and pinky finger. Keep our index finger barred here across the seventh fret. We're gonna pluck these two strings and pull them off. So one, and, on the two beat, go back up to the ninth frets and then up to the seventh frets of the fourth and third strings. So one and two and three. On the end beat after the three, we'll pluck the fourth, third and second strings in a B minor shape, like that. And then on the end beat after the four, we'll go to our A triad, we'll pluck the fourth and third strings. And on the end beat after one, pluck the third and second strings. And then on the end beat after two, just hit the G triad. So taking that back, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And in total, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Next we get to the bridge and I'm not entirely sure if this guitar part is in the recording. It's really hard to hear because I think the piano is more dominant here, but I thought it's a cool part to play anyway. So I'm just gonna follow the piano and what it's doing there. We're gonna start with the D sus four chord shape here. We'll start with the bass note and then on the end beat after the two, we'll pluck the first string. And then on the four beat, lift your pinky finger, pluck that first string again. So one and two and three and four and. For the next bar, we do almost the same thing. In terms of rhythm, it's the same, but we're plucking different notes. So bass note, and then we'll lift our middle finger, hit the open first string, and then the second string. So those two bars, one and two and three and four, and one and two and three and four. For the next bar, we do almost the exact same thing, except our middle finger now goes onto the third fret of the sixth string. So it's based around a G chord shape but our high notes will do the exact same thing. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. For the next line of tab, we go to a B minor chord. So our bass note will just be that B on the fifth string. The high notes will be exactly the same. And then we'll just go to an A and hold it out for the next two bars. So the bridge, one, two, and three. Now for the final chorus, it's almost the same as the other choruses, except that second section is played through four times and not just twice. And then the outro is just the same as that second section. We're just gonna keep repeating that again and again. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. 
Okay, so now I'll teach you how to play all the lead guitar parts. Now, first off is a really subtle one, and this is in the second verse. It's a really simple lick. There's just five notes here. So index finger barred across the seventh fret of the fourth and third strings, and your ring finger will go onto the ninth fret of the third string. We're gonna be palm muting this as well. So take the fleshy bit of your palm, rest it lightly on the edge of the bridge, not too far in, just right on the edge. And then when you pluck these notes, you'll get a really nice palm muted sound. So we go fourth, third string, lift your ring finger, and then fourth, third, and back to fourth. So just five notes here. And this starts on the end beat after the ones. So it goes one, and two, and three, and four, and. And that just gets repeated again and again throughout the second verse. Really nice and easy. All right, so now I'll teach you how to play the solo, which is pretty easy. Now there's three lines of tab here. We're gonna start on an F sharp here, so seventh fret of the second string, and we're gonna hit that and slide up to the A, which is the 10th fret, so. Now that is on the four beat, so one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and. On the next four end, we're going to be doing the same thing, but sliding from seventh to 12th fret. And we'll hold that out for the same amount of time. For the next section, we'll go down to the seventh fret of the fourth string. So the A here will slide up to the B. Hit that F sharp, the seventh fret of the second string again. So. And then the final phrase is just the ninth fret of the third string. So an E here, and we're going to hit that slide up to the 11th fret and back down. And then to end this first line of tab, we're playing the exact same thing that we started this solo with. So seventh fret to 10th fret. And that takes us to our second line of tab. For the first line of tab, one, two, and three, and four. And three, and four, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and two, and three, and four. So for the second line of tab, we hold on to that 10th fret for essentially two bars, but on the end beat after the four, we'll hit that seventh fret and go up to the 12th fret again. So we'll hold that out for a while. And then for the next phrase, we'll go up to the 15th fret, hit that and slide down to 12th. And then the next phrase is the 10th fret of the second string here. So the A down to the E, which is the fifth fret. And then to end this, Line of tab will go to the seventh fret of the fourth string, hit that and hammer on to ninth, up to seventh fret of the third string, and back down to ninth fret of the fourth, and back up to the seventh fret of the third string. So. Then continuing on, we'll go to the ninth fret of the third string, hit that and slide down to fourth, and then we'll go down to the second fret and slide back up to the fourth. And that's it for the solo, which sounds like this in total. Now I'll teach you that lead guitar part that's in the outro that just sort of repeats again and again. And it's a rhythmic, funky kind of riff. So we're gonna start with our index finger on the ninth fret of the fourth string. Hit that and hammer it onto the 11th fret. And then on the next up strum, you'll take your pinky finger, put it on the 11th fret of the third string, and we'll hit those two notes. Now you wanna keep all the other strings muted by having your index finger behind those notes that you're fretting. So when you push down on the 11th frets, the only things that will ring out are those fourth and third strings. So 
on the next down strum, just lift your fretted fingers and you get a muted chuck there. So. And then on the next up strum, we'll go back down to the ninth fret of the fourth string. And then down, down. So. And then to end this will be another up stroke on that same note. And then a final chuck. So. And a little bit faster. So now I'll be doing two playthroughs of the song. The first playthrough will be the studio version with the electric guitar. And then the second playthrough, I'll just be using the acoustic guitar. So it's an easier strum method if you just want to strum and sing along by yourself. A big thanks to my friend Eric for lending his awesome vocals of these playthroughs. Feel free to play these back as many times as you'd like to to practice, play along too, and see how you go.
searching for the night together Where we don't fall apart Pocket now and it might be never It's just another shot in the dark It's just another shot in the dark And I wonder Conversation with you in my dreams. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Love seven other women and they all were you. We had a run of bad romances. They always missed the mark. So close your eyes now and take a chance. It's just not a shot in the dark. You met your guess and no It left you with a broken heart Remember when it's done and no Thanks so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this lesson, then I know you'll absolutely love these other lessons too. So hit the link here, or if you wanna grab a copy of my free guitar ebook, then head over to guitarzeritohero.com or click the link here. Thanks so much, and I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zero to Hero. Cheers.